To become a reality, lofty ideals need to be translated into concrete actions. One of the great ideals of our time is the humanitarian imperative. The notion that there exists a right to receive and to give humanitarian assistance wherever it's needed in order to prevent and alleviate human suffering, protect life, and ensure respect for all human beings without discrimination. When disaster strikes, the humanitarian imperative boils down to ensuring that people have access to water and food, shelter and health care, protection and safety, and that they're listened to. Simple, yet essential. But anyone who has ever been involved in humanitarian response knows that making all this happen is anything but simple. Humanitarian work, like any other important task, needs to be well done, and that isn't easy at all. The story of the Sphere Project is, it's the story of key actors in the humanitarian sector getting together to make sure that the lofty ideals that drive their work are translated into common principles, minimum standards, actions, indicators, in other words, concrete, measurable benchmarks that help them achieve greater quality and accountability in their work while performing their tasks professionally. This story begins in the 90s. Back then, many changes were taking place in the humanitarian sector, including the fact that some new players, like the military and development agencies, were entering the field. In 1994, an estimated 800,000 people were killed in the Rwandan genocide. Following this tragedy, a multi-donor evaluation concluded that if humanitarian agencies had done a better job, more lives would have been saved. The Rwandan tragedy was a catalyst, and in 1997, a group of humanitarian, non-governmental organizations and the Red Cross Red Crescent movement set up what came to be known as the Sphere Project, a unique, voluntary initiative aimed at improving the quality and accountability of humanitarian response. By 1998, a trial edition of the Sphere Handbook was ready. At its core was the Humanitarian Charter, a summary of common values and principles guiding humanitarian work. In addition to the Charter, a series of universal minimum standards for life-saving areas of humanitarian response were established. The first published edition of the Sphere Handbook saw the light in the year 2000. It quickly became a success and was translated into 29 languages. The second edition of the Handbook came out in 2004. It met the same wide acceptance as its predecessor. 13 new language versions were added. By the end of the first decade of the 21st century, new developments in the humanitarian sector made it necessary to again revise the Sphere Handbook. Over two and a half years, more than 650 experts from some 300 humanitarian organizations, including all the relevant United Nations agencies, were involved in this revision. The result of this wide consultative process, which has in itself been an achievement in terms of collaboration within the humanitarian sector, is the Sphere Handbook 2011 edition. The third edition of the Sphere Handbook has some significant changes. Its core is still the Humanitarian Charter, which has been completely rewritten, incorporating clearer language and stronger linkages with the minimum standards. The Charter affirms that humanitarian response is based on the principle of humanity and the humanitarian imperative. It spells out three fundamental rights of people affected by disaster and conflict. The right to life with dignity, the right to receive humanitarian assistance, the right to protection and security. A new chapter on protection principles reflects the result of a decade-long debate within the sector. It's grounded on the conviction that protection is intrinsic to all humanitarian response and that all humanitarian actors must be concerned with the protection and safety of populations affected by disaster and conflict. There are four protection principles. First, Avoid exposing people to further harm as a result of your actions. Second, ensure people's access to impartial assistance in proportion to need and without discrimination. Third, protect people from physical and psychological harm arising from violence and coercion. Fourth, assist people to claim their rights, access available remedies, and recover from the effects of abuse. Core standards are a practical expression of the principles described in the Humanitarian Charter, 
and the entry point to the technical minimum standards. They refer to processes that need to be put in place and to the people involved. Core standards focus on community-centered response and give visibility to coordination as well as performance and learning. Taken together, the Humanitarian Charter, the Protection Principles, and the Core Standards constitute the backbone of the SPHERE Handbook. By stating that humanitarian response is that which is concerned with the basic rights of people affected by disaster and conflict, these three tools affirm humanitarian principles as paramount. It's this focus on rights that distinguishes true humanitarian action from service delivery and identifies humanitarian organizations as the key actors in humanitarian response. The minimum standards are a compilation of best practices in the sector and a practical expression of the principles stated in the Humanitarian Charter. They do not stand alone. They need to be read together with the core standards. The minimum standards cover four areas of humanitarian response, which are critical determinants for survival in the initial stages of a disaster. They are water supply, sanitation and hygiene promotion, food security and nutrition, shelter, settlement and non-food items, and health action. These four technical chapters have been restructured in the revised edition of the handbook. They include Minimum qualitative standards Key suggested actions to help meet those minimum standards Key indicators that make it possible to measure whether a standard has been attained and guidance notes addressing practical difficulties, priority issues, and dilemmas. While the SPHERE standards are meant to be universal, the handbook helps humanitarian actors to recognize different contexts and adapt response programs to them. It offers guidance on how to attain universally applicable standards in concrete situations. When the circumstances make standards impossible to meet, they are still useful as guidance. Furthermore, by explaining why they've not been met, they serve as accountability benchmarks. In addition to the rewrite of the Humanitarian Charter, the new chapter on protection and the restructured technical chapters on minimum standards, the handbook has some other new features. It takes education in emergencies as well as humanitarian reform into account. It considers emerging issues like civil-military relations, cash transfers, and early recovery of services and livelihoods. A series of cross-cutting themes address vulnerability factors such as gender, children, and HIV and AIDS, among others. The SPHERE project story started a decade and a half ago. Today, with its rights-based, people-centered approach, the SPHERE project and its handbook help equip humanitarian actors to continuously strive for quality and accountability in their work. The project has become a force for cooperation and coordination within the humanitarian sector. Being a state-of-the-art summary of best practices, the handbook enables a truly professional approach to humanitarian response. As the Sphere story projects itself into the future, you're invited to become a part of it.